Good afternoon, everyone. So now we can get started. My name is Neeraj Khairia, and I have been in this IT domain for around 14 years, working as a solutions architect for different industry verticals, including insurance, banking, retail, aviation, and other location-based services. And in terms of the trading front, I have been working as a corporate trainer since the last five years now. So let us get started with the React.js basics. So again, this is not for advanced. This is a simple basic introduction on how React.js is structured. Now, first of all, we let's talk about what exactly React.js is. Then we'll talk about React.js installation, the simple Hello World program. And then we are going to discuss on top of React.js fundamentals as a part of simple hands-on. So this is what we are going to cover as a part of today's journey. So what exactly React.js is? So React.js is what? React.js is basically one of the most popular libraries offered by Facebook. So again, just like we have Angular, as which is a, like a framework, a full-fledged framework offered to us by Google. Twitter offers us Bootstrap, same way Facebook designed and launched. React.js, which is like not exactly a framework, but just like a library, just like we have a jQuery library which adds which can be used to design the front-end applications. So this is what React.js is. So it was introduced back in 2013 and then it was made live for the public back in 2015. So React.js is concerned with the components that utilizes the expressiveness of JavaScript and with an HTML-like simple syntax that we can go for. And it is basically based on the view in the MVC architecture. Just like we have model view controller. So this React is basically used to design the view component of the React. That's how it works. And in React, there are different things that we have the concept of virtual DOMs where we can create virtual object directory. We can say trees instead of recreating the same object structure again and again whenever any change is going to be done. And this thing simply makes React.js much faster as compared to other platforms so that we don't have to recreate the same tree again, the complete tree set again and again if you have to update just a one single tree item. And this makes the entire process of fetching data much quicker as compared to the other platforms. So this is what React.js uses for keeping the entire set, we can say process of fetching data and that too as quickly as possible. So next we have the concept of the data binding as well. So data binding, so here in React we, uh, we do get only one way data binding, not a two way, like in Angular. So here we have one way data binding, which where we can bind the data from the view. So any action taken from the UV, for example, the user has clicked on a button. So that can be linked to the action and then that can be handled by the dispatcher and then whatever element needs to be fetched that is going to be fetched in the store and again it is going to be deployed and fetched in the store and so on so these all things are what we can configure as a part of a react based setup and then it offers a server side rendering so here we can ensure that again whatever changes are going to be needed so they are going to be rendered at the server's end so that they can provide a better performance in terms of the local number of requests being generated here so it's a part of the server side rendering application. Now let's talk about the installation of React.js. So to install React.js, we can navigate to the library. So basically, in order to work on React.js, we can have Node.js installed. So in Node.js is like a framework built on top of JavaScript. And we know that React.js itself is built on top of JavaScript. So for working on React, we can install Node.js first. Here we can go ahead and include Node.js. We can click on the version that we want to go for and then let, we'll be able to access it. So we can download the, the installer and then once we have installer set up, then we can go ahead and open up the terminal. So if we open up terminal, just to ensure that Node has been properly installed, we can type in Node, double space, and double space then double hyphen version. So if Node.js has been properly installed, then we would be able to see the version of Node returned to us as in version 14.7. Now Node also allows us to have the access to something called as NPM as in Node Package Manager. So we don't have to install NPM, it is automatically installed once we are going to have Node.js installed. So we can use NPM and then we can type in the command as install 
Now to start working on React application, we can simply install one library called as Create React App. So basically, this downloads the the package setup so that if we are going to create the React app, then we do need to have the access to multiple libraries, and those are going to be automatically configured when we are going to run this create react app command. So as you can see, this one has been installed successfully. So once we have create react app installed from npm, we can use the command as npx, and then we can use the package as in create react app, and then we can give the app name. Let's suppose here we want to call the app as demo app. So in the current location, the create react app is simply going to, okay, demo app is already there. So we can do one thing, we can name it as my app. So this is going to create an app called as my app and all the required libraries for React. That is React, React DOM, React Scripts. Again, they all are going to be downloaded and the dummy application for running on top of React is going to be configured. And that is something that we can start customizing the way we want. So first thing first, we have to run the command as npm and then we have to use install create react app then we have to run npx space create react app which has been installed successfully and then we can find the app name which can be anything so this is going to install all the libraries from the create react app command and then we will be able to have the code structures available that we can create and build so first of all are we clear on the installation of the react based application So as we discussed, first of all, we have to install create react app by using npm space install create react app. Once this is done, then we have to use npx and then space create react app library that we have installed, and then we can give any name to the app. All right. All right. So that's how it works. We had discussed this is currently installing the create react app library from the npm library manager that we have got the access to by npm by node.js so it's like an app store so just like if you want to add some additional functionalities into an apple system then we can use app store if you want to add some additional functionalities in your android then you can use the play store so same way we do have the store we can say the library available for npm which is going to have multiple packages required to be up and running for the node and then we can directly install them so that we don't have to manually go ahead and configure the scripts all right and once we are done so what we can do is we can go ahead and switch to this folder here as in my app and then we can type in npm space start so this is going to start the npm script and based on the react app library that we have deployed the react app on so react app is by default installed on port 3000 in the local host and this is a sample react application that we can see opened up in the browser and now to start editing it what we can do we can navigate to our vs code and here we can op click on open and here we are going to open up the entire folder for my app which is going to contain the entire structure for a react based application so node modules contain all the node packages that we have installed and we have initialized and then we have the public where we have the index or html which is a main page which is going to be rendered in the browser and in the main index or html page we have defined one division id as root and then under source the main entry point of the application is index or js and in here we have currently defined the app as app.js so whatever we are looking at so that is where we are going to go ahead and structure so as you can see this one has been defined so now if you want to modify something then what we can do is let's say here we want to modify something so here we can simply just say close header and here we can use the h1 tag and uh, suppose let's say here we want to use the center we want to use the h1 as in suppose say welcome to ria tab so what we have done here we have modified the main app itself and if we go back to the browser we would be able to see this change is now going to be visible in the browser you can see it says welcome to react app that we have configured in a vs code and now if you want we can have multiple components created and then we can include them the way we want
So let's say if we have a requirement of creating multiple components. So components are what? Components are like individual entities that we can create here. For example, let's say we are talking about any store. For example, here we talk about, let's say, Amazon. So Amazon is also divided into multiple zone, multiple components. Like we have a search component on top. We have a complete header component on top. Then we have then we have components for slider for different categories. So we divide the application into smaller components. Like we have the menu, we have the header, we have the slide bar, and so on, so that we can focus on these different items individually. So let's say within the header component again we have multiple components. Like we have the components for menu. We have components for the name, for the name system, for the account management, for the user and so on, and for the users to search over the items. So we can have different components defined in a single application. So let's say in React, if you want to create multiple components, and first of all, we do need to create files. Let's suppose here we have, let's say here we can name this component as contact.js. So now if you want to get started, we can simply first of all import react and then we can import component from react. And then if you want, we can define suppose class, uh, suppose contact, class contact extends component. Like we have the can like we have the setup for inheritance. Then we can define the render function. Now within render, let's suppose here we want to define return. And as a part of return, we want to specify everything inside the vision. And in here we want to place, suppose say here we have a custom component, or let's suppose we want to add a date. Let's say here we define January 17. 2021 and here we can add another line suppose as h4 or suppose let's say h5 as custom component custom component so towards the end what we can do we can simply define export default contact the name of the app that we have defined once we have done, we can save it. And let's say we want to display this page in the application page that we are currently modifying. So first of all, we have to import the content that we have defined. So here we can define import. Now here we want to import contact component from contact, and we want to display it after we have placed H1. So what we can do is we can simply import contact. So whatever component, whatever data we have mentioned under contact, is now going to be displayed here as two individual components being displayed together. So are we all clear on how exactly we can set up a React-based application and how exactly we can create a custom core component and how we can include them together? All right then, so again, a big thank you to you all for joining and have a great day ahead.